Amherst Media's 2020 Year in Review, a challenging task when so much of the imagery captures and amplifies the people's righteous indignation against the escalation of social inequalities. Can a short video do justice to the full spectrum of action for change by the people? No, it cannot. What we can do is show some of the diverse, creative, and inclusive ways our extensive community is utilizing Amherst Media's technologies, platforms, and venues to invite critical dialogues by and for communities of color and other marginalized and oppressed peoples on their self-identified issues of national as well as local importance. This isn't a new role for Amherst Media. We have been producing and distributing issue-driven content for the past 45 years. Our local producers and show hosts continued from 2019 into spring of this year to address timely issues, such as Critical Connections Executive Director Melika Samdani, who interviewed Professor Mohamed Junaid, cultural anthropologist and assistant professor at the Massachusetts College of Liberal Arts, about the current situation in Kashmir, as well as the history of Kashmir. Samdani also took on the escalating presence of white supremacy on social media with her guest, Dr. Whitney Phillips of Syracuse University, followed by her introducing Embrace Race co-founders Melissa Giraud and Andrew Grant Thomas, who had produced On the Flip, I See Color, at the Eric Carl Museum. The event, captured by Amherst Media, featured eight storytellers in a non-competitive, community-building environment. The Amherst Historic Society show, History Bites, is a weekly lunchtime lecture series, and it continued to explore dramatic issues with Michael Hoberman speaking about Jews and Puritans in colonial New England, and Scars of Slavery, presented by Bruce Laurie. Dr. Joseph Wonka's program, Creating a Human Rights Future, explored the issue of healthy masculinity with Dr. Anthony Hill, Hourglass producer Tulip Chowdhury, in her segment, Darkness of Narcotics, explored the damages incurred by individuals through drug dependency. Holistic Happenings, a show hosted by Denise Deneen, focuses on different modalities of holistic health care. In one segment, Deneen interviewed Caitlin Lavin about fascia stretch therapy. Eric Brody of Pictures at an Exhibition continued his outreach to area artists by interviewing Laura Radwell and Avital in another segment discuss with Prosheta Mukherjee Olsen on her painting allegories of post-colonial history through its political, visual, and material culture of India in today's global age. For an edgier experience, viewers were able to hear from a member of UMass alumni Secret Society Tales of Yesteryear from 1965 to 1973 and opinions about smartphones and the future such as cyber warfare. In our commitment as a venue to a diversity of arts disciplines, the long-running legendary jazz series Magic Triangle was hosted by series producer Glenn Siegel. Siegel brought vocalist, musician, composer, and dancer Jen Shu into our studio for an informative conversation with this accomplished artist. Every year, one of our most gratifying events, which takes place at our annual meeting, is the selection of the Jean Haggerty Award recipient, honored for their commitment to community engagement. Last year's event was filled with love and admiration for Pat Ononibaku, who is an inspiration for all in the community. Local issues continue to be on display, whether with the introduction of the newly formed group Amherst Neighbors, or coverage of the Fair Housing Forum, or highlighting our public schools with the superintendent's program window into Amherst Regional Public Schools. The Amherst Winterfest on the Town Commons displayed lit lanterns and provided music of celebration. Amherst High School's hockey games were videotaped so the community could follow their successful season. 
Senior Moment host, David Revson, spoke with longtime politician Stan Rosenberg. Rosenberg's own program, Byline, continued to bring local politics to the forefront, like helping to explain the upcoming referendum on ranked choice voting. With the onslaught of the COVID-19 pandemic, Amherst Media was faced, like so many other businesses, with the hard decision of whether to close our facility or remain open. The dedicated staff decided their role of providing critical, hyper-local communication regarding town closings, including schools, and where to find health information is, was, and will be essential work. The Amherst government meetings were recorded and made available online and our cable channels. Our producers continue to find virtual ways to reach their audiences, bringing their knowledge, concerns, information, and joy, especially with and through the arts. Amherst Media staff provided the production expertise and venue for Memorial Day observation, as well as high school graduation and the Juneteenth celebration. The events that have transpired since the killing of George Floyd, the latest in a long list, as well as the pandemic death toll which unevenly ravages communities of color, coupled with 40 million unemployed workers, leads us all to ask, when will we start building the new and fully inclusive institutions and systems that truly respect and serve all of the residents of this country equally when our mission remains consistent to provide a venue for the voices of those with limited or no access to media and to provide an opportunity to have their voices heard and amplified we are here to provide opportunities for civic engagement through the open and free expression of opinions perspectives and creativity for all people we will remain a venue that exemplifies the values and meanings of the first amendment for all